Hello and welcome to The Entrepreneurial Musician, a newsletter, coaching service, podcast, and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. This is TEM 296 titled, Create Your Own Opportunities. Thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hits Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, today's episode features a clip from a session that Jeff Connor did uh, at the Brass Career Intensive, which is available uh, via Hits Academy Library. Uh, it features over 10 hours of brass players who are crushing it in the music business today, including Chanel Critchlow of Pacific University and formerly of Pitch Black Brass Band, Lance LeDuc of Carnegie Mellon and formerly of the U.S. Air Force Band, River City Brass Band, and Boston Brass. Mary Bowden of Serif Brass, who's amazing. Chris Bill, the most subscribed brass player on YouTube, who also kills it on TikTok. Hiram Diaz of the President's Own Marine Band and myself. You can head to BrassCareerIntensive.com to get actionable career advice from all of these incredible brass players on everything from starting and scaling a chamber group to how to build a thriving following on TikTok and YouTube, um, the key to making art that people can't live without, and more, all from people who are actually doing this stuff, which I think is important. It's, of course, possible to teach something that you can't do yourself. Uh, I'm going to refrain from uh, commenting on a lot of uh, music business coaches who have uh, never done it themselves. Uh, but there's uh, something special about hearing from the people who are actually thriving at the moment, just simply sharing like what they're doing and how they got there. That was the whole idea behind the Brass Career Intensive, uh, and it is all available uh, today at BrassCareerIntensive.com. You can learn more. So let's hear this clip from Jeff Connor uh, talk about creating your own opportunities. This, this is amazing. Even if you have nothing to do with brass, this clip is not about brass. This is about being proactive, creating your own opportunities. And this is Jeff talking about the early days of Boston Brass. But yeah, it just, you know, all those, those gig boards were, were, were great. I mean, that was a great resource. That was the internet of the time, right. you know, that was like, okay, there's all this work to be had, right. you know? And it's like, well, you know, e even if they were, you know, as an individual, even if there, you know, there's a school where there was a, another college or a high school that was looking for a clarinet player for, you know, Oklahoma for the musical production of Oklahoma, I take it down and I just, I take it and I call them you have a trumpet player you set for trumpet players hmm. you know uh hmm. no you know and then if the answer was no it's like well next year you know let me tell you you know who i am and can i send you some info or you know when are you going to start thinking about your uh your pit next year and would you be in you know be would it be okay to to reach out so hmm. and then just keep it it's like okay i need to contact this person then um, this is totally applicable to the days of the internet as well, because if you were to look up now, you can get a lot more information before you pick up the phone than Jeff was able to uh, back in like the 1950s when he's talking about now. Uh, but right. but wooden you, trumpets, you get <laughs> you can yeah. you can if you search for music director openings for churches. And again, you've got a list of churches who are paying money for music. And then like that, so that weeds out the ones that don't even have that. And then there's a subset. And then you can easily go and Google each one of those, find mm -hmm. out who has a concert series. We, we started creating concert series, our own concert series at different oh. churches, you know, with, with organists that we would know, even if they didn't, we would say, okay, can we, you know, can we come and do a concert with you? Or we decided because once you get out of college you know once the group like a year or so after the group started it's like okay where are we going to rehearse you can't just sneak into your schools you know and we did that we were able to do that for a while but eventually it comes like okay we don't can't be rehearsing here take be taking up space for the students who are actually there what? so we started making arrangements with churches you know can we if we rehearse here if we can rehearse here you know two three times a week we'll do three or four services during the year for free. Mm. And then you also hire us 
for Easter and Christmas Eve for all your services. And we'll do um, maybe two concerts, hmm. you know, and it can be a free will offering. Right. But, you know, the, the, what we would do is the day we would have the concert, that would be one of the days we do the church service, you know, for free. And then so that they're hearing us and we advertise for the concert that afternoon at four o'clock, you know, just want to hear more and hear, hear a concert. So, again, it's just creating opportunities. That's, that's so creative. You are solving a problem for them. You're solving a huge problem for you, because if you were if you were looking to to rent a space that you could rehearse three times a week in, uh, that's that's going to be a bunch of money. And uh, and there's you can't just decide when those rehearsals are. You obviously have to plan around like funerals, things like that at churches that like that sure. pop up. But but that's uh, that's providing them with value that's like hard wiring it's like oh by the way you're gonna hire us for christmas and easter which means you're actually getting like some good checks there mm -hmm. they yeah. get pe to tell people that you know that boston brass performs at their you know for four of their services and christmas and easter and then there's a couple of concerts where you get to try out concert material and mm -hmm. and get donations that's that's the kind of uh like if i could if I had to distill the non-musical side of Jeff Connor into one thing, it's that kind of creative problem solving. It's just like, you know, where in retrospect, what you did there is like really obvious. It's like, of course, like that, that benefits the church. And I'm going to talk about this in my networking thing. It's got to benefit both sides or else the other person's mm -hmm. not happy that you bothered them. That benefits the church very much benefits Boston Brass. That's and yet like not everybody has thought of that. Right. And so, uh, yeah, you're just good at um, you're good at distilling things and just figuring out exactly what needs to be offered to whom to move your needs forward, which is great. All right. You're not supposed to say nice things about someone that you were in a road band with for 14 years. Uh, but <sighs> Jeff is brilliant. Uh, he didn't just wait for there to be a trumpet opening on a local show and then hope to get picked. He proactively called and inquired about openings, openings now and openings in the future. He didn't just look for pre-existing concert series that might have a group like Boston Brass play and then hope to get picked. He also asked organists if they wanted to do a concert with Boston Brass even when there was no concert series. Talk about a different ask when you're just trying to be chosen from a large pool of potential musicians to saying, hey, I've created something like this before. Would you like to help me create one here for you? Jeff didn't approach the normal places where Boston Brass could rehearse and try to talk them down price-wise. He solved a problem for a church by working for free three to four times a year and got free rehearsal space for the year. And how brilliant is it that he hardwired that they would get hired for Christmas Eve and Easter? That takes a really stressful thing off the plate of the music director at that church uh, because it, it can be hard to find like really great brass players since they get they get snatched up quickly uh, for those uh, those very popular dates. Uh, plus, it guaranteed the band work on high paying days uh, for, you know, again, like those are great gigs for brass players to get. And it was also brilliant to have some of their three to four free services be the morning of their concerts at the same church. That's just beautiful marketing. Much different than playing at a service and then saying, and next month we're going to be here. It is saying uh, to people, hey, we're going to be here in a few hours. And if you want to hear more of that, then you can just come back at 2 o'clock and, uh, and we're good to go. When done right... All three of the examples I just gave help the other person. <clears throat> the music director gets connected with a dialed in and very proactive trumpet player. The organist can raise their own status within their church and its community by performing with a group like Boston Brass. And oh, by the way, when you start looping the community into what you're doing, that almost always leads to job security, uh, in this case for the organist slash music director. Um, then the, also the church where they rehearsed got top tier brass players three to four times a year for services without needing any budget for that, uh, as well as a couple of concerts at no charge to be able to offer to the public, which is going to help them with recruiting and, and bringing people in the door and, uh, and also just for their congregation. Always 
think about what you can do for others, what problems you can solve for them. And then when it's mutually beneficial, it, uh, it checks things off for both of you. And uh, that really is the key to success. I loved that, uh, that session with Jeff. He just, he was so pragmatic about all of the, uh, about all the way that he approached everything. It wasn't just hustle, 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 hustle. Um, it was what he did, how he did it, thinking outside of the box, uh, the, I'll close with this, that calling the music director, uh, you know, of a high school musical and saying, I see you need clarinet. Are you all set for trumpet? And then asking permission, saying, would you mind if I contacted you again next year to see if you have a trumpet player? Uh, that's brilliant because it gives them a chance to say no, but talk about proactive. That's, um, yeah, that, that's really good. And uh, yeah, there's a great lesson in there for me. And I'm guessing there's a great lesson in there for you as well. Okay. This week's quote is from the great Pharrell Williams. Quote, entrepreneur just denotes that you recognize that you're doing things across disciplines and that you're blazing your own path, end quote. You don't just play your music. You don't just make your art and then wait for the money to roll in or for people to notice. These doing things across multiple disciplines could be that you make great art and then you market it in a really creative and remarkable way. Uh, it could mean that you are um, that you make your art, but then you are collaborating with someone else and then you get access to their audience, they get access to your audience. The point is that you don't just get, well, actually any of us do get to just make our music and then wait for the world. Uh, but boy, that's, that's an uphill battle. Um, uh, it, slash... A quasi impossible battle. It's the same thing with you can just have like be an incredible teacher, and then if you just sit there and wait for students to find you, uh, they're not going to. Like they're they're just, there's going to be a small trickle, but you are not going to be able to put together a thriving portfolio career by simply focusing on uh, a very narrow definition of the art that you are making and then not worrying about anything else. So again, entrepreneur just denotes that you recognize that you're doing things across disciplines and that you're blazing your own path because. Making the music and waiting is not your own path. Uh, that has been attempted by thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And there are a few people that that has worked for, but uh, they are the exception. And so we hear about them and we say, well, I want, I want to sign up for that plan. And you're certainly welcome to. But, uh, and I genuinely mean good luck, but I also sarcastically mean good luck because uh, it's probably, I would love for you to send me an email and say that's exactly what I did two years from now. And it worked beautifully, and I will be happy for you. I will give you a high five, but that is not how it worked for most of us. All right, thank you so much for uh, listening to or, or watching this on the YouTube channel. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the YouTube channel uh, or wherever you get podcasts. For anybody who's listened, uh, rated, and reviewed uh, this on Apple Podcasts, uh, except for the, uh, the couple of people that gave it a bad rating, uh, I'm not going to say thank you to you. Uh, no publicity is bad publicity, right? Uh, anyway, thank you for your attention, the most valuable commodity that any of us have to give. And uh, tell a friend, tell an enemy, I, I don't care, just tell somebody uh, if you get something out of this. And, uh, and thank you to everybody who has uh, signed up for the uh, Portfolio Career Playbook, the newsletter from TEM. You can go to signup.tem.fm to learn more there. And um, thank you so much. You are all appreciated. And that is going to do it for another episode of The Entrepreneurial Musician. Thank you.